I mean, hopefully it will make sense by the time we are done here, I think it will. So, so here's the thing, right? You notice that there's a, there's a possibility of us kind of factoring out common functional. No, notice that this code fragment, this code fragment, this code fragment, this code fragment is just the same. We're printing the string here. So we're saying, why can we not just implement a procedure that does this, just as an example, right? Um, so a procedure will just print strings. Something else, that, yes, sir? Why don't we? Like after those common fragments that we have. Yes. So we also have like the two common fragments. This? Yeah, the one before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could, I guess. You could. Make an into one Yes, you could make a procedure that's that that kind of reads an integer. So you have jump and link read integers as your procedure, you can. I'm just using two examples here where we are printing a string and also exiting the label. But you can, nice kite. What, what he's asking is that because code common fragments here between lines number, in line number 24, 25 and uh, is it 15 and I don't know, 16 or something, these are the same, why, why can we not do the same thing we are doing here? Yes, we can. Okay, so, but in this example, we're just looking at printing a string and exiting as well. So we can convert these three code fragments here into, we can encapsulate the code here into a procedure, right? Um, right, so uh, effectively what you'd be doing is in all these uh, labeled parts here, you'd just have jump and leak statements linking to the name of the procedure applicable to the code fragment. So in this case, the procedure for printing the string, in this case, the procedure for exiting. Right. Yeah. Yes. How many procedures can you present by jumping It's one. You jump you jump the format of the instruction is jump and link the name of the label, which is the label address. So it's just one. So you can only link to one address. Uh, I mean one one label, one procedure. Which makes sense actually. Yes. No, no at a time. You see, you can write a very long program, complex program, that has maybe 10,000 lines of code. And within that, those 10,000 lines of code, it's highly likely that you might have maybe 50 procedures doing different things. You can have 50 jump and links, and 50 or more jump and links, referring to those 50 procedures you'd have defined. Right, so an example of uh, the, the, so what we've done is, uh, we're saying this part here, this part, this part, and this part, we're going to convert them into what we are seeing in line number in line number 42 up to 45 and I'll just switch to if we go to line number 42 up to 45 you notice that we have uh, this code snippet here where all we are saying is uh, What we are saying in 42 to, to 45 is we are going to uh, make use of system call code number four and then um, uh, issue this call here and then jump registers to I. You notice something very peculiar here, right? The, there's a part that's missing. Because when you're invoking a procedure, sometimes if you take an argument, you have to specify an argument to the procedure. You, you're doing this when you're invoking it, which is why, observe, in parts where we are evoking jump and link print string procedure, we have right before that, we have the load address into A0. So we are loading the address of the string we wish to print into A0 and then we evoke the procedure. And this, is, this is why, this is what makes uh, implementation of print, print string procedure flexible, I guess. Is this, is this making sense? 